So, uh, hello again. Uh, we are going to talk uh, today about uh, the, uh, the last uh, question that um, I got from a, from a student, which was very interesting, and uh, this is why I have decided to uh, to dedicate uh, a separate video about this, which is the uh, connection, the relation between uh, Noether's theorem and uh, uh, the, uh, the interior of the black hole in the uh, Schwarzschild solution in, uh, in the sense of, uh, so how do you relate the Noether's theorem with uh, uh, the killing vector field inside of, uh, of the black hole? So Noether's theorem uh, states, so we're going, we're going to state we're going to start, sorry, we're going to start by uh, stating the theorem itself. Uh, the theorem says that uh, given any one parameter family of transformations that uh, preserves the Lagrangian, this is the uh, Lagrangian, you have at least one conserved, this should be conserved, even if you don't believe it, quantity corresponding to that uh, symmetry. So, I want to give now an exact uh, description. So, let me delete all of this. So consider any mechanical system, by the way, this is not uh, necessarily related only to relativity. This could be to any classical mechanical system. And uh, we're going to consider a mechanical one with a Lagrangian L and a killing vector field K. If uh, the one parameter flow of k, which is defined as the unique solution to this uh, initial problem, the the epsilon of a phi at q equals to that uh, vector field phi epsilon of q and uh, phi of uh, zero at uh, q equals to q. If uh, you have a, a one parameter flow, like uh, this one, uh, preserving the Lagrangian, then the function defined as uh, i equals partial derivative of uh, the Lagrangian with respect to uh, q dot times d of uh, p respect to epsilon at the epsilon equals zero is equal to the partial derivative of the Lagrangian divided by uh, q dot uh, say mu k mu is conserved, this function is conserved along the trajectory of any solution to the Euler-Lagrange equations. So, I have uh, written everything so that it's uh, more clear. Again, you consider a mechanical system with a Lagrangian L and a vector field K. 
here. Now, uh, if uh, you have uh, one parameter flow of k, the vector field, the vector field can be anything, like uh, for instance, uh, uh, you know that if you walk around Earth with a compass, uh, the compass is going to be pointing in the direction of the magnetic field, which is uh, covering Earth, so that at every single point uh, on the surface of Earth, you have a vector, so that you have a vector field. Now, uh, uh, these uh, two equations, so which I have uh, uh, called one here, they define the, uh, the one parameter flow of k. Which, uh, so it corresponds to the unique uh, solution to this uh, initial value problem. Now, if uh, this flow preserves the Lagrangian, so if it, uh, you know, if it keeps the Lagrangian, then the function i here is conserved along the trajectory of any solution to the Euler-Lagrange equations. What does this mean? If uh, uh, equation 2 is conserved along the trajectory of any solution, then this means that uh, if uh, q at uh, q in time t is a solution to the euler lagrange equations, then the time derivative of the uh, function i, which I define it, defined sorry, in two at uh, qt is equal to zero for every uh, single moment t. So think of uh, k as uh, generating rotations and uh, phi of epsilon, a rotation with, uh, say, an angle I don't know, epsilon, like this one. So uh, the rate of change of uh, phi epsilon at q with respect to epsilon is equals to the vector field at the point phi epsilon of q okay now you can get uh, the uh, uh, you can get the identity map when the angle is zero if the angle is zero you don't rotate anything so you get uh, the identity map and uh, this is how you define this flow, phi of epsilon. Now, if this flow preserves the Lagrangian, then equation number two, which uh, is uh, this one here, I, is constant along any trajectory of the system. This is how you define a conservation law. And uh, here, you cannot probably, don't know what you can see, it, but uh, uh, dot Q in uh, the same equation, I, uh, over here, dot Q, is the product of the generalized momentum with a vector field k. 
Now, this uh, equation three, I will leave to you as an exercise. And uh, as it follows straight from the identity, we have uh, the following Lagrangian. Epsilon Q dot Epsilon T equals to the Grandian Q Q dot T where I have defined Q Epsilon identical, not defined, but identified to uh, I, sorry, of uh, Q. I'm going to call this for. Now, for most mechanical systems, such as system, I don't know, systems moving uh, under a holonomic constraint, the Lagrangian can be written in the following form L equals to one half of. Uh, a mu of q q dot mu q dot mu minus v of uh, q and i'm going to call this uh, i of course well just to clarify a little bit things i just uh, uh, mentioned uh, holonomic constraints. So it's important to understand what it's coming from. Uh, in uh, ancient Greek, this is called uh, holos. Holos, which means uh, hall, like in Catholic, by the way. And uh, nomos. If you have read uh, Plato, you know what this means. This means law. And uh, we are referring uh, uh, to this in the context of uh, holonomic constraints, which are expressible as function of the coordinates x, j, and time t. A good example for what a holonomic system is and a non holonomic is, uh, I mean, uh, sorry, I meant uh, holonomic constraint, is uh, the following. Consider Earth, this is Earth, and it's described by a sphere. And, uh, uh, well, you can move around the surface of Earth. Right, this is of the earth, and you can move around it. So, your motion is constrained to lie on the surface of a sphere, so that uh, you are subjected, you are subject, sorry, to a holonomic constraint. On the contrary, if uh, what we are considering is not Earth, which is uh, self-gravitating, but uh, say, for instance, uh, 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 whatever, a beach ball. Like this, this is a pitch ball, and this is uh, the ground. And uh, you place, uh, for instance, a P on the surface of the beach ball, the particle, so this P, will be able to fall because of gravity, right? Uh, in this case, the constraint becomes non-holonomic. For the first case, you walking around the surface of Earth, uh, the constraint may be given by the equation uh, R square minus uh, capital R square equals zero where R, K, 
capital R is the radius of Earth, and uh, uh, low case R is the distance from the center of a sphere. Now, in the second case, if the radius of this uh, pitch ball again is R, then uh, because we have a non holonomic case, we have that uh, R square minus capital R square must be larger or equal than zero. So what uh, we can deduce is that uh, a holonomic system like uh, this one is a system in which we can find out its state by having information only about the change of positions of the components over time, of course. But you do not need to know the velocity or even in what order the components moved relative to each other. On the other hand, uh, the right example, uh, which is uh, non holonomic, is a system in which uh, the velocities of the com components must be known. I mean, how they change over time to find out what is the change of the system, of the state of the system. Or a system where you have uh, something moving, like our P here, which is not able to be bound to the surface. Uh, yeah. Now, in uh, this equation 5, V is a, a smooth, it must be a smooth real value function of the positions Q equals Q1, Q2, etc. Q, let's say, level S. But there's something interesting going on here. The coefficients a mu nu of the Lagrangian form a symmetric matrix. Matrix. And uh, I'm going to ask you why and uh, leave it as an exercise for you. Why? And uh, therefore, a mu nu can be diagonalized on every single position Q. Now, in the particular case in which uh, the potential V is identical to zero, we're left with the Lagrangian L equals one half of uh, a mu nu of q q dot mu q dot mu and I'm going to call this 6 when we are left with 6 we have a scalar product of the velocities in every single point and that's because uh, these uh, coefficients, a mu nu, define at every point a metric tensor, one which is uh, non degenerate and uh, a symmetric product, which means that uh, uh, maybe here a mu nu is equals to. Uh, a uh, mu mu oops and that the eigenvalues 
of it are non-zero. So since the matrix uh, A mu nu is at every point uh, diagonal, so diagonalizable, my goodness, so you can diagonalize it at every single point, it means that it is a pseudo Riemannian metric tensor. So pseudo I'm sorry. Ma Nyan metric tensor. And uh, as a matter of fact, for most non relativistic systems, this matrix is positive, definite, and therefore a purely Riemannian tensor. And uh, because of this, the uh, procedure of calculating all conserved quantities in the system boils down to solving the Killing equation for that tensor. So, again, uh, we have that the eigenvalues of uh, a menu are non-zero. And uh, because uh, L, so the Lagrangian here, is a metric tensor on the manifold of positions, and the Killing fields are exactly those that preserve the Lagrangian, as per the Noether theorem. This is a one-to-one -one correspondence between Noether's theorem and the killing data fields. So you might have uh, noted that uh, everything that I have uh, been talking about uh, does not include uh, the word uh, relativistic in it. If uh, you are considering the motion of a relativistic particle, then L, the Lagrangian, is the metric in space-time of equation 6, I believe. Yes. Where A menu now corresponds to the metric tensor of the space-time manifold. Therefore, a vector field preserves the equations of motion of a free volume particle if and only if it's a killing vector field. And uh, this is the connection between the killing vector fields and uh, another theorem. Let's see it. Consider a space time given by M and G, the usual thing. And uh, because the Lagrangian, sorry, and uh, no, no, so sorry, let me back up. So, yes, let's consider this kind of uh, space time and a free falling particle. The Lagrangian, in this case, is given by one half of uh, G mu mu. Now you see it, uh, q dot mu, q dot mu. The Lagrangian is a scalar multiple of the metric tensor, and uh, therefore a vector field K preserves the Lagrangian for that particle if and only if it is a killing vector field. And uh, arrived uh, to this point, allow me to be a little bit pedantic and uh, remind you of uh, what uh, Plato said. Agiometreus me esito. So, uh, in ancient Greek, 
I don't know about morning Greek, but uh, in ancient Greek, this would be like uh, I me. Tratos Nat Sito with tones, which uh, means uh, uh, a geometers don't incite or so uh, do not allow anyone not knowing geometry get inside of here referring to his academy so why am i being pedantic it's not just because i want to uh, show off with uh, ancient greek uh, uh, sentences but uh, I have a good reason for that. Uh, for some motive or reason, people tend to think that, uh, at least uh, people interested in physics, tend to think that uh, you need uh, geometry when uh, you are interested in relativity. But that's not the case. Uh, you can actually use uh, geometrical methods for anything related to classical mechanics. And uh, if uh, you want to uh, dive into this kind of uh, approach, which is, which is a very intuitive and uh, human uh, approach to uh, classical mechanics, I uh, would uh, recommend you that uh, you take uh, uh, the book Mathematical Methods of uh, Classical Mechanics by Arnold. And... Uh, Anyway, so uh, this was the connection between Noether's theorem and um, the uh, killing vector fields when you are talking about, uh, in general, classical mechanics, but uh, why not a uh, free falling particle? So I hope that everything was clear. If not, you know that uh, you can reach me by email. My email is Amaro, like my surname. At and then riseup.net. Thank you and uh, bye.